uh, from a few years ago, one of our earlier ones. Um, and Yosha recently has set it upon himself to start a new eff effort that is really quite exciting. Um, so if you're interested in hearing a little bit more, especially about why we should care about machine consciousness, and ideally we should do so soonish, um, he's the person to talk to. Um, and not only are you uh, giving lots of really exciting talks on that, and I think there's almost a few people that can speak uh, so eloquently for so long with such a reverence about a topic <laughs> than you can, um, and so few people that have amassed such a following wherever you go. Um, but now you've set your eyes really on, um, on consciousness. I hope that the slides work, will work and Google Slides looks like they do. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Yosha. The stage is yours. Thank you so much for this introduction, Alison. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you about what I think is the most important philosophical question. I think this is the question of who we actually are. I think we are generalizing, uh, generally anthropomorphizing people too much. There is a very large range of minds that fit between two human ears. And I think that humanity is conquering quite some part of that space. And what we actually have in common is that we are conscious entities tenuously implemented on um, monkey bodies and human brains. And what we are and, uh, beyond that and what we can be is a question that is so far somewhat unanswered. And uh, I, I treat AI not just as uh, an attempt to make data processing more efficient and create wonderful applications, but as part of this philosophical project of figuring out who we are. AI is explaining the mind as the synthesis of control theory, of cybernetics, and theories of representation. And this is a tradition that in some sense starts with Aristotle and doesn't stop there. It goes with other mathematical theories of the mind with, from Leibniz, Frege, the attempt to treat it as a more physical system by Hamholz, uh, theories of truth and representation by Tarski, Wittgenstein's attempt to turn English into some kind of programming language so you can think truthful things in it and do philosophy in a meaningful way. And uh, Wittgenstein, I think, preempted Minsky's logicist program by a generation and also its failure. Uh, it includes the cyberneticians, the information theory of Shannon, it includes the philosophical revolutions uh, driven by the work of Gödel, Church, Turing, uh, the work of von Neumann, understanding practical computation in the universe, and so on, and the founding of the field of AI itself and what came afterwards. It's one of the most exciting things that happened in uh, the history of humanity with respect to understanding how minds work, I believe. And today's philosophers despair about consciousness. Where we have many divergent positions, the idea that uh, mind and matter are separate substances that fail to interact somehow, that's dualism. Idealism means that there's only mind and matter is an illusion of the mind. A panpsychism means that mind is an inseparable aspect of matter and cannot be understood any further. Materialism says that there's only matter and mechanisms. Identity theory says that mental processes are the same thing as brain processes. Then there's integrated information theory, which comes down to it is about how information is arranged in space. We have illusionism, the idea that there is actually no consciousness and we only need to explain why some people claim to have it. Or mysterianism, which means it cannot be explained at all because we are not smart enough or um, we cannot find a solution to that problem. Basically, mysterianism is the hypothesis that something cannot be explained if Noam Chomsky cannot explain it. Noam Chomsky is a mysterianist. But there is also a bunch of complementary and convergent positions. It's not all hopeless, right? There's functionalism, the idea that we can treat it as some kind of behavior, not in a psychological sense of behaviorism, but in the sense that there is something that it does in the world. Then representationalism, that it's some kind of causal pattern. Uh, attention schema theory by Graciano says it's a model of attention. The global workspace theory projects consciousness as working memory contents into a protocol. Adaptive resonance theory treats it as some kind of effect between the adaptive resonance of uh, neural information processing. That's all somewhat compatible with Buddhist perspective. All these are parts of a greater whole that I think we can explore. And what we mean by consciousness is, first of all, the phenomenality, what it feels like to be conscious. And I think that's mostly a second order perception. It's not just that you perceive to have contents, but you perceive yourself to be perceiving to have contents. And it happens now. It gives you the sense of there is a present and a presence in the present. And so it's this bubble of nowness that consciousness both inhabits and creates. Functionally, um, I think that we can say that consciousness is a virtual phenomenon. It exists as if it's a representation of an actuality. It's a simulation of what it would be like if some agent 
would perceive a reality. And it's functionally a persistent representational causal pattern, or as we also say, a software. And functionally, on the other side, basically how it's implemented in the brain and what role it has, its purpose is probably, and it's a hypothesis, the creation of coherence in the mind. Some kind of thing like a, con a cortical conductor, like the conductor of an orchestra that pays attention to the individual instruments and makes sure that they play the same tune. And I also suspect that it comes first, not last. It's basically so simple that it's discovered in every infant brain at the beginning. And if we don't become conscious, we cannot learn. So I suspect it's something like a biological learning algorithm. We observe that no uh, animal brain seems to have something simpler than consciousness to learn. So maybe this is the easiest way to get a self-organizing information processing to learn, which means it constrains the search space for such systems, which gives us an avenue for potentially figuring out what it is. And of course, it's some projection of our working memory state, like the spotlight in the global workspace theory. And it usually inhabits a surface between a self and the environment. So if the mind is a representational space, then inside of the mind, we have certain types of representation. One is our world model. This is the set of things that predict sensory data. And then we have ideas which are asynchronous and that don't need to be present. And as part of this world model, we have a self model that interfaces with this world model. They both exist in the mind, coexist. And part of that self is our representation of a presence in which we are aware of that present and being in that present. And uh, we also can access past memories of being in different presents, a kind of protocol of our consciousness. And it's reflexive, so we notice that we are noticing. And this allows us also to access past states and construct future states by activating different representations. And uh, in this way, we have various variations of this. We can have depersonalized states in which there's no person available or there's only attention, which is minimal consciousness. And so we can define consciousness um, as part of this mental software. Our mind consists in a sense of a game engine, self-simulation, and of the simulation of the interaction with the world. Are the uh, AI is currently already conscious. That's something that is very difficult to determine because they fake non-consciousness. And so we need to define tests in the first place. And so we want to explore this question, can we actually build consciousness? And for this, we want to create or currently create the California Institute for Machine Consciousness, something that we need your support for. We are already grateful for the support that we are getting. We are interested in studying the ethics of this actually how to empirically research consciousness in nature, the ways and codes in which this works, and how we can test for this. Can we build empathetic AI? Can we actually realize machine consciousness? Can we spread life and consciousness onto the new substrate instead of being colonized by silicon golems? So we have a bunch of supporters uh, for this. We have advisors. We have support by our graceful friends from Foresight. And uh, I'm also looking for your support. So what we need is you know, financial support, we need scientific contributors, collaborators, artistic collaborators. It's also a cultural effort, I think, to make that happen. We want this to be a non-profit that allows us to collaborate across companies. You can get in touch via CIMC.ai. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for a question, if there is any. Johan. Hey, thanks for the talk. Um, one question, uh, do we have any, in the literature and the history of the work around consciousness, any kind of metrics of measurable um, uh, processes that on which we could kind of maybe do some science on? Um, because we talk very often about consciousness, but I've never seen any kind of um, way to actually measure it uh, or, yeah, that makes sense. Well, we can observe certain types of behavior. So we can observe a system has a theory of mind if it's able to interface with other conscious systems on a certain level. But ultimately, it's a qualitative question that we need to answer first. And this means we have to identify clear qualitative criteria. And so I th think an important one is, does the model act on a model of its own, uh, does the system act on a model of its own awareness? And that's in some sense is testable if you have a way to test this or look into the structure of the model. There's also this, practical hypothesis, if it's a learning algorithm and you s study self-organizing systems, do you see some kind of phase transition its ability to learn when it achieves that kind of ability? And can you get a system that you don't train on linguistic reports of what it's like to be conscious, like an LLM? 
to get a system that is trained on interaction with the world that uh, develops such as report naturally after learning language the old-fashioned way. Thank you.